portal, name, image, and likeness, et cetera. So from a name, image, and likeness standpoint, uh, right away we got supportive of that and got behind it. And uh, I love watching some of the entrepreneurship of our student athletes and some of the things they're doing. And uh, we'll, we'll continue to support them. We actually do support and we'll continue to support the Swarm. I met with Brad early on and I was excited and I've said publicly and privately really grateful for, you know, he's put in his own time, his own money, his own energy and uh, I still feel that way, really appreciate it. Um, you know, my staff talks to his staff maybe almost daily, uh, whether it's, you know, the football event, the basketball trip to New York, other events that we've done, uh, promoting, you know, the idea to have our coaches endorse uh, the swarm that was decided sometime in the middle of December, and and we'll continue to do that. Now, to your question about will we have differences of opinion, the only real difference that we have is uh, me turning over the personal information of our season ticket holders and our donors, and we're not going to do that. We haven't done it for anyone else. I've talked to a lot of ads around the country. I still haven't heard one school that has done that, and I've heard from plenty of season ticket holders and donors that say. You better not give away my personal information. So we won't do that, but we'll continue to, to support uh, the Swarm. It appears that some schools have done some of that, though. I mean, and how do you how do you navigate that to where there are, are some donors that don't want to have anything to do with it or don't, just don't want to have the emails and have it go to the spam folder versus being able to help this, which is really the lifeblood of your operation. Absolutely. We, I mean, we both want the same thing. We want to promote the program, and whether it's giving to the Swarm or giving to the iClub or facilities, whatever it is, you know, I'm, I'm on board. And I've been encouraging donors to give to the Swarm. I still, Scott, have not talked to a single AD that said they've given up their their uh, mailing list or their donor information to the to their collective. Uh, I, I've, I've purposely reached out to a lot of them. I just haven't come across one that has. Again, irregardless of what others are doing, I just know it's not something that we're able to do. But we can continue to support the Swarm through other ways. And we can, uh, because they're a corporate sponsor now, we can promote it and, and have been and will continue. Will, you, will they have a table at your Hawkeye Huddle? They, they absolutely were invited to the Hawkeye Huddle. And I, I think you all have been to the Huddle and later, well, it's today, actually, uh, a little bit later today. And we'll celebrate the team, we'll recognize parents, and we invited uh, them to come to the Huddle. And if, if they're there, I, I haven't heard confirmation, we'll recognize them and share with the crowd that they have an event tomorrow, a, a, a swarm event. So we will promote it uh, if they're there. I haven't heard any of the details of that. What are some of the maybe Title IX concerns that are ambiguous, I guess, at best right now concerning collectives and, and a university support of that? Well, I'll start with, you know, the Swarm has no responsibility for gender equity. I, I fully understand that. I, I acknowledge that. Everything we do, we think through that lens of making sure we're fair to men and women. Uh, when it comes to name, image, and likeness, we're going to continue to just make sure we're offering as much fairness to men and women as we can. Again, the Swarm has no responsibility for that, and I understand that. Uh, but do, does it ever could it cross a line in the way you support the collective and, and how, I mean, because it's primarily, I mean, there are three sports, two of them are, are male. Um, does, can that lead to any kind of issues, not only in Iowa, but across the board? The, the, whatever we do to support the swarm, uh, it's really about how far we can go to promote it and not, uh, the biggest disagreement is not uh, taking our personal information of our donors and our season ticket holders. We're not going to do that, but we'll support them in many other ways and we have been and we'll continue. What could you do if they were Title IX compliant that you can't do right now in terms of supporting them? I don't know that there's a lot of difference. Again, um, the big difference is, you know, releasing that personal information. Um, we'll continue to do as much as we can without turning over uh, our mailing lists and our personal information of our donors and our season ticket holders. Um, and again, that's that's the reason we're not able to do that is because of that, not because of gender equity. But you're going to be okay emailing out things on behalf of them, right? Yeah, on occasion like we do with, uh, because they're a corporate sponsor, that was really important because we do that occasionally with other corporate sponsors or with the Hawkeye Fan Shop or other things that we have relationships with, some other uh, sponsors through Hawkeye Sports Property. So because they they became a sponsor, it does give us a little bit more latitude, yeah. With that sponsorship, you've mentioned the various ways that Iowa Athletics has supported Swarm. 
how much of that is part of the corporate sponsorship versus you doing it at a cost of the athletic department to support them? I don't know that there is any cost for the athletic department to support them. I don't know if I understand that. Or question. just like how much of the support that Iowa Athletics has for Swarm, how much of that is because of the sponsorship? It just allows us to do more so that we're treating them like we would treat another third party uh, that's not, you know, the, the NCAA set this up so that we can't run the collectors. You all know that. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly trying to support it and promote it as much as we can because we're, we're both wanting the same thing but not stepping over a line. By them being a corporate sponsor, it does give us a little bit more flexibility because we can then do some things with them like we do with other sponsors. When it comes to this type of topic, I mean, the last 10 years, it started out as snowball, now it's an avalanche. There's so much going on, and it's changed even in six months to the point where we're- Or uh, month by month, yeah. Yeah, recognizing it. Is there anything, you've been in a leadership position nationally, you still are on certain committees. Is there anything that you can, that you have any ideas about that might stem this that's not going to necessarily curtail any kind of revenue potential but the athletes but but can just streamline it, put guardrails on it make it more acceptable right now it's it's as though somebody said let's go ahead and allow this and we'll figure out the rules later and, and that's been the hardest part of this is uh, one of the things is to have the same rule nationally uh, you know in every state that would be helpful the other thing would be uh, I, I personally think you know, having the the concept of collective, having the ability for athletic departments to run them, uh, so that so that we you know we don't have to have this third party that we're trying to figure out, and and maybe that's where we'll go. A new president of the NCAA, um, you know, we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to put it all on the new person, but uh, we need something that just takes the free agency, no rules concept out of this and creates some. I like the term guardrails, uh, or at least direction. You know, we always want to do it the right way it would be helpful to have more certainty. And, and I've talked to a lot of ADs across the country who feel the same way. Give us more certainty on what the right way is. You mentioned potentially athletic departments running collectives. How much would that streamline that process if you were able to do that? Well, it certainly would, would make it more, we'd know what the rules were. We'd know what we can do as an athletic department versus having to have a third party, an outside entity, do it and then try to figure out how much we can or can't support them. So uh, I, I think that is a, a viable solution. I think it's something that could happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Under that umbrella, though, you, you know, it would take away some of the outside leverage that athletes currently have now with this new rule. Do you expect there to be some sort of unionization dealing with the National Labor Relations Board, the, kind of the way Ken Coulter from Northwestern tried to accomplish eight or nine years ago? Yeah, as, as I know you know, uh, you know, out on the West Coast right now, there's another discussion about it. I know this. Here's, here's the way we're trying to approach it at Iowa. Financial aid for student athletes. That's what I'm. Th that's the big picture. So we've always had scholarships. Then we brought in cost of attendance. Now we've added 5980 Alston. I anticipate there's going to be more uh, financial aid in some way, shape, or form for athletes. And I think maybe it does become a collective bargaining type environment. I could see that happening. I would. I would fall short in thinking. I. I don't think it's better for them to be employees, but uh, you know, having a say, having a collective bargaining, I do expect, you know, when this next round of TV money it comes in in a couple years for Iowa, you know, I'm kind of in my mind envisioning there's going to be additional financial aid for student athletes. I just don't know what the form will take yet. Two more questions. Is um, in, in football, I think what most fans out there realize that you're Brian's supervisor. Um, and I think that's pretty widely reported. Do you hear from a lot of those people about do something, make a change, uh, and do you feel like it is within your power to make a change if you wanted to? Well, certainly, I'm the head of the department. Yeah. So, uh, but but just to get back to the process, you know, for those of you who've been around for a long time have heard me say, uh, observe daily, mm -hmm. evaluate annually. That's exactly what Kirk has done in the past. It's mm -hmm. what he's doing this year. You know, the last month has been focused on recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. Then most recently, get ready for this bowl game. When the season is over, he'll go through the same process he always does. He'll sit down and figure out what, you know, what do we need heading into 2023. Uh, because of Brian's relationship to Kirk, I'll be more involved than I otherwise would. Mm -hmm. But the process Kirk uses will be exactly the same. So you wouldn't, would you overstep? Is there any case you would overstep whatever decision you made? Could you? I'm going to wait. Willing to? I'm going to wait till Kirk is done with his okay. evaluation. Again, because Brian is mm -hmm. uh, his son, I will be more involved than than normal. But you know, uh, we'll wait and see okay. where he gets in his planning process. Okay.
What are the metrics then that you're going to be using to evaluate Brian? The same metrics that uh, Kirk uh, uses to evaluate anybody and he evaluates his offense and his defense. And that was sort of my point. He'll go through that process when the season's over. Uh, like he always does, and he and I always sit down and we, we talk about, I listen to what his ideas are, what his plans are, and the only unique situation here is I'm, I'm going to be more involved just in that one that one situation. But uh, he'll, he'll set up the metrics like he always does, he'll go through his process like he always does, and when he has something to report about 2023, he'll come out with it. All right, thank you.